Coming up on today's show, Tesla turns a profit for the first time in two years, General Motors autonomous vehicle development is slower than it thought it would be, and why Volkswagen has some really screwy logic about getting more electric cars on the road. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, folks. It's the last show of the month. And as you're all getting ready for Halloween fun, it's time for me to give you a brain dump of all of the latest EV and clean transport news. On Wednesday, Tesla revealed its best ever quarterly earnings figures yet, showcasing record production deliveries, revenue, and for the first time in two years, a profit. Unlike last time, however, Tesla's Q3 2018 GAAP profit, $311.5 million or $1.75 per share, has dramatically helped Tesla's share price and seems to suggest the company is heading towards long-term profitability. Wall Street's reactions have remained mixed, with most analysts being positive towards Tesla short-term, but still worrying about all of the debt Tesla has to pay off and its competition in the long term. Rapid charging an electric car today requires them to be plugged into a specialist high power quick charging unit. But that may change in the future, says a team of researchers from the US Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory. They've just successfully built and tested a 120 kilowatt wireless charging system that achieves a 97% efficiency, something that's comparable to most plug in quick charging stations. The charging station's secrets, a silicon carbide power electronic system that can transfer power across a large air gap. Less than a week after it announced the Tesla Model 3 mid-range, Tesla has upped its sticker price by $1,000 US dollars or equivalent. The mid-range, which will now retail from $46,000 US dollars before incentives, will come with an estimated range of 260 miles per charge. Tesla says it will honor orders in progress at the previous price, but hasn't clarified why that price increase occurred. Earlier this week, during the quarterly earnings call, however, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed that the $35,000 standard range Model 3 is currently impossible to produce with a positive gross margin, adding that he hopes that that will change in about six months' time. The Nissan LEAF has received approval from the German government to be used in vehicle-to-grid energy storage systems, allowing energy from the car's battery pack to be fed back to the electricity grid in peak demand periods through special two-way DC quick charging stations. Nissan's vehicle-to-grid technology has existed in Japan for many years, but the LEAF is the first car certified for use in Germany with this technology. At the moment, however, Nissan will be focusing on corporate fleets with more than 60 cars in them, with V2G tech offered in the country for fleets and eventually individuals from next year. Following its ongoing financial fight with its main investor Evergrande, Faraday Future has quietly cut its hourly employee salaries by 20% and has laid others off. Employees were told of the hourly wage cut on Sunday night and it will come into effect next week. It's not clear how many people were laid off, but it really is starting to look very dim indeed for the company that seems to be using up its final lifeline. Consumer Reports has issued its latest annual auto survey, which collates ownership experience data from its many, many readers across the US. Unlike previous years, when Tesla Model S reliability was enough to earn it a recommended status by the organization, an increase in suspension and door handle issues has now put Model S at below average reliability. Meanwhile, Model X remains much worse than average thanks to issues with its Falcon Wing doors and center consoles. Model 3, while reasonably new, is now officially the most reliable Tesla you can buy. Volkswagen will produce electric cars that are as good as Tesla but cost half as much in just two years' time. That's according to Volkswagen boss Herbert Diaz, who made the throwaway statement during his appearance on an episode of German TV channel's ZDF's political discussion show, Maybrat Ilna. It's worth noting, however, that the comment wasn't the prime reason for his appearance. He was there ostensibly to discuss diesel engines and said that the whole discussion on diesel engines and dieselgate was too emotional. Hmm. 
A prototype of Tesla's next electric car, the Model Y, has received sign-off from Elon Musk to enter into production. Musk made the disclosure in Tesla's Q3 earnings call, stating that full production won't happen until 2020. There are very little details about Model Y right now, but we do know from a separate filing made this week in China that Tesla intends to build Model Y alongside Model 3 at its Shanghai facility. As I have more info, I'll share. It's election day in the US in under two weeks, and if you've been reading this channel's YouTube community section and my personal Twitter, you'll know I'm very keen for you to all get out and vote. Well, now there's even less excuse not to because scooter share service Lime, as well as Lyft share platforms Uber and Lyft, are offering discounted and or free rides on election day. Follow the link in the show notes to find out how you can take these offers up politics. You may not like them, but essentially you need to get out and vote and get involved because politics affects every part of your life. And now it's time for those short shorts. Nant Energy has announced that its latest zinc air battery cells have reached the $100 per kilowatt hour holy grail electrochemists have been chasing for years. Zinc air batteries are far more energy dense than current lithium ion batteries because oxygen is used as one of the reactants. Nant Energy says cells can survive thousands of charge reach charge cycles. General Motors has confirmed that it will hit its 200,000th plug-in vehicle sale in the US this year, triggering a ramp down in US federal tax credits next. If you want the full federal tax credit on a Bolt or a Volt, you've got until December to grab one. Simultaneously, GM has called on the Trump administration to set up a nationwide zero emission mandate from 2021 based on California's current ZEV mandate. It would force automakers to produce zero emission vehicles and methinks GM has models planned that such legislation would help sell. An autonomous electric school bus made by Transdev North America that had been operating at the Babcock Ranch in Florida since the start of the school year has been told to cease operation by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. While there was a safety operator on board at all times, NHTSA said the vehicle was non-compliant with regulations. Karma Automotive, the company that was responsible for the rebirth and rebranding of the Fisker Karma, has just launched a new variant of the Karma Rivero plug-in sports hybrid called Aliso. Its price? A staggering $145,000. Only 15 examples will be made. Tesla has finally pushed a version 9 autopilot update to customer cars this week that enables the promised navigate on autopilot feature. Unlike its original conception, however, drivers will still be expected to engage the turn signal to initiate a lane change. The car will just tell them when to do that. A new race series has been announced in Europe for electric cars. Called the Electric Touring Car Race Series, it's being hailed as a global multi-brand race series for touring cars and will launch in 2020. For those who don't know, touring cars are heavily modified versions of production road-going cars, and it has quite a following in Europe. Apple's self-driving program, aka Project Titan, may have been quiet of late, but we've heard reports this week that the Silicon Valley company has developed plans to test its own powertrain and vehicle chassis using 500 Volkswagen e-Golf frames as test mules. Apple has not confirmed these reports. Fisker Inc., the company set up by Henrik Fisker after Fisker went bankrupt, has received a large investment from Caterpillar Ventures, the company responsible for all of those heavy-duty plant machinery. It may seem like a weird marriage, but large industrial machinery should be going electric too. Akimoto, the company behind the all-electric three-wheeled fun utility vehicle, has just opened a customer experience and rental center near its headquarters in Eugene, Oregon, where people will be able to try one out before they buy. I'll be heading down soon for a test drive. Continuing its gutting of the science part of the US EPA, the EPA has scrapped a pair of independent air pollution science advisory panels that regularly advised the agency on regulation. Instead, it will use a smaller panel of seven industry insiders, with five of them coming from non-scientific backgrounds and conservative-leaning states. British inventor James Dyson, who was a prominent Brexit supporter, has announced that Dyson has picked Singapore, not the UK, as the manufacturing base for the company's first electric car. The car will be launched in 2021, most likely without those promised solid-state batteries. 
Volvo has made an undisclosed investment in infrastructure company Freewire Technologies. Known for its mobile electric car charging solutions, Freewire Technologies received a $5 million investment earlier this year from BP, resulting in filling stations getting some of its tech. Rumours suggest that Renault is considering pulling the plug on the partnership that gave rise to the joint platform on which the Smart for Two and Renault Twingo is based. This could result in the death of the Smart for Two and thus the Smart for Two EQ. I'll keep you posted on this one. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. General Motors' independent arm, Cruise Automotive, may be working hard to bring autonomous Chevrolet Bolt EVs to the streets of San Francisco by next year, but now it turns out that developing the technology is proving a lot harder than it initially thought. Sources close to GM say that nothing is on schedule, and Reuters reports that some of the crew's prototypes are still having image processing problems, identifying phantom bikes, failing to always spot pedestrians, and identifying a row of parked motorcycles as being in motion, causing the cars to abruptly stop. Just as Tesla and Waymo have experienced, teaching cars to drive is fine in theory, but a whole lot harder in the real world. Swedish company Unity has announced its intent to begin production of the Unity One electric car at a pilot plant at Silverstone Park, England from 2020 onwards. Unity says the plant will become a template that it will use to produce similar facilities around the world, allowing it to produce its low cost, zero emission runabout locally to where those vehicles will be sold. This not only supports the local economy in each market, but keeps carbon footprint of manufacturing super low. Zero Motorcycles has updated its range of all-electric motorbikes for 2019 with some new colour schemes, longer range of battery packs and more power across the board. The Zero FX and FXS start from US dollars or equivalent, which makes them more affordable than in previous years, while the Dual Sport DS and DSR variants get a touring windscreen and handguards as standard. They used to be add-on extras. Finally, Zero has said its charge tank accessory, which adds level 2 charging capabilities, can now be retrofitted to any Zero S or DS variant made from 2015 onwards. And finally, earlier in this show, I told you how Volkswagen was promising that it would beat Tesla in price, but match it in performance in electric cars in the not-too-distant future. How's it going to fund all this development, especially given those dieselgate fines? Well, Turns out Volkswagen has a cunning plan. Make and sell more SUVs because they're growing in demand around the world so that they can then plough that money into plug-in and autonomous vehicle development. Um, anyone else notice the absurdity of that model? And on that note, it is the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, give us your thumbs up and your thumbs down. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you can, please consider supporting us through Patreon. We really couldn't make any of these shows without all of the fantastic support that we get from our Patreon patrons. And it's never too late to become one yourself. If you're celebrating Halloween, I hope you stay safe and have lots of fun. And if you're not, well, I hope your week goes really well. I'll be back next week and then things do get a little screwy because I'll be away from the studio quite a bit in November. But I'll tell you more about that next time. OK, that really is it. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter and kinder. Keep evolving.